let's praise the Lord, everybody, for his great love. Lord, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. Everybody offer up a shout this morning on a Sunday morning. God, we praise you for your great love. Great is your love, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand to our feet all over the room, please. Are you glad you're in church? Are you glad you're in church? I believe you are. It's a beautiful day to worship the Lord. It's a beautiful day to be with other believers and um, to, to celebrate the love of God. Man, if we could just grab the truth of that song. God's not against you. God is for you. God loves you. He really does love you. Bad things happen in life sometimes, but that does not lift the favor and love of God. You can be the favorite of God and go through what Joseph went through, and the favor was on him, and they couldn't take it off of him. Wherever life took him, favor stayed on his life, and the goodness of God kept raising him up. You know, bottom line is this. You have to, you have to guard your thought life. You really have to guard your thought life and not allow the enemy to creep up into your thinking and tell you God is not a good God because he is a good God. And if you know he's a good God, just cheer yourself up right now and praise him. Thank him. I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going a step further in this service until we really praise God for his goodness. You've been good to us, Lord, and we praise you and we thank you. And we worship you and we honor you. That's what this day is all about. Now look at your neighbor and say, because he loves me, I love you. And smile at him and say, you're in the right place today. You may be seated. Open your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Daniel chapter 4. I've got a good word for somebody today. Daniel chapter 4 is where I want to go. And verse 14 and 15, verses 14 and 15 of Daniel chapter 4. He cried aloud and said this, Chop down the tree, cut off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruits, and let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth. Tie off that stump, he goes on to say, bind it with a band of iron and bronze. And I want to take a few moments. This is in reference to King Nebuchadnezzar and what happened to him. He went through a time when God gave a vision to Daniel about a beautiful tree. And it was flourishing and it was massive and its branches reached so far you couldn't see and the fowl of the earth would nest in it. It was a, a sign of incredible prosperity and success. But then there came a time when he was lifted up in pride and God said, cut the tree down. And that's where we picked the story up. And this was a prophecy over Nebuchadnezzar's life. That you're going to go through a season where God's going to bless you in enormous ways beyond anything you could imagine. But then there's going to come a season when the tree's going to be cut down. But notice he said, I won't leave you without something. And there will be a stump left of what you used to be. You'll get down to the stump, tie it off, because there'll come a day when I'll visit that stump and cause life to come back. And today I want to talk to you about the fact that our God is not only Lord of what you've got, because everything you have, he gave you. He's Lord of what you've got, but equally as important, he's Lord of what you've lost. I want to say boldly and strongly that God is sovereign and in control. And if you've lost anything, 
I know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God is Lord not only of what you've got by his hand, but what you have lost. And then thirdly, and most importantly, what I'm preaching on today, he's not just God of what you've got and God of what you've lost, but today I'm preaching on the God of what's left. Because he's left you something. God will never take from you without leaving you something. God will never allow the enemy to take from you without leaving you something. That's why the tree was chopped down, but notice God left the stump. The stump. I'm the Lord of what you've lost and I'm the Lord of what you've got left. If God lets you lose something, you can rest assured he will leave you something in its place. And you need to understand that he's Lord of what you've lost, but he's Lord of what you've got left. He said, nevertheless, leave the stump. Leave the stump because I'm going to I'm going to cause things to come out of what you've got left that will produce what you need for my purpose in your future. Save the stump is heaven saying, leave something to hell. Save the stump is heaven saying to hell, you cannot take everything from them because God will always bless his children, not by what they've lost, but what they have left. He's saying to hell in the scripture, leave that stump alone and don't touch it. You can only take so much. And I'm saying to you that if God lets you lose everything, this is so important. If God lets you lose everything, it's his boat. You didn't need it to fulfill his purpose. If life, if life or sickness or death takes from you and your family, God always uses what's left while you're lamenting over what you've lost. God is saying, I'm telling you that I am going to use what's left and my purpose for your family, for your life, and your future, if you will hold on to your faith, will still come to pass just like I planned it. I'm Lord of what's left. I, I, I know there's a stump left. I had something. I lost something. But God uses what I've got left. Noah understood that if God needed the wicked society for his plan to be accomplished, he wouldn't have wiped them all out. But his miracle was not in what all those people vanishing in the flood took. The miracle was in the eight people left on the, mark, on the ark because God's Lord over what's left. Jesus said the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Anytime he comes into your life, God is about to use what's left. Anytime there's a window open and the enemy has stolen from your life and you're standing there saying, what happened? Where did it go? Why did this happen? It's God saying to you, I'm going to use what you've got left. You can't lose anything or anybody that God feels you need to fulfill his purpose in your future. So if they have been lost, it is God letting you know, I'm Lord over what's left. And I will bless you sovereignly and mightily with what's left. Trust me, believe me, hold to my promises. Stop lamenting over what you've lost. He's going to use what he's left you. Job, the Bible said, received a permission note from God to attack, or Satan received a permission note from God to attack Job. Now I want you to watch this because it's very important you understand it. It gives us insight in the God who's Lord over what's left. He said, Satan said to God, the only reason he serves you is because you blessed him so much. And God said, all right, 
I've got a hedge up. And Satan said, you sure do, and I can't touch him. Who wouldn't serve you if you were that blessed and had all that material stuff? And God said, all right, take hedge number one down, but put hedge number two up. You can take his stuff, but you can't touch his body because God always leaves you something left. The enemy attacks and takes all of his cattle, his sheep, all of his wealth, all of his business, wipes him out. And then he still stands and says, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan comes back in the next chapter and says, well, if you let me attack his body and make him sick, he'll curse you to your face. God says, all right, let down hedge number two, but put up hedge number three because I always leave something left. So you can touch his body, but you can't cannot take his breath. So anytime one hedge goes down, God puts another hedge up to protect something so that you always have something left. Every time the devil wants to destroy you, your God leaves a hedge up. It's what you have left that's going to frustrate the devil's plan. You missed a great chance to shout right there. It's what you have left that's going to frustrate the devil's plan. Do you have anything left? Do you have any praise left? Any faith left? Any joy left? Any promises left? Any dream left? Any hope left? It's what you have left. There's still a stump. Listen, the loss was painful but what left is powerful. What did Job have left after he lost all of his resources, after he lost his health, after his friends uh, turned on him, after his wife turned on him? What did he have left? All he had left was confidence and faith, and he makes this statement, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Listen, listen, this is so powerful. In other words, he was saying, (laughs) even, one translation said, even heaven can't destroy my confidence in heaven. You ever felt like heaven was doing everything to mess your theology up and your belief in God? But Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In other words, not even heaven can shake my confidence in heaven. Though it looks like God is slaying me and wiping me out, it does not shake my confidence in the fact that he's too good to forsake me. He's too faithful to leave me. He's too precious to abandon me. And when it's all said and done, I will come forth as pure gold because he's God of what I've got left. And God said, out of what you've got left, Job, your confidence and your faith, you've lost it all, but what you've got left is going to produce double everything that you lost. Let's take a praise break right there on a Sunday morning. I know it's spring break, but I want you to give God a praise if you believe he's God over what I'm preaching his word this morning. I'm preaching that he restores the years the canker worm and the locusts have taken away. He's too good to drop you. And if he can't destroy your faith, he's the God of what you have left. Gideon, I'm going to use you to deliver my people from the Midianites. You've got 32,000 soldiers against an army of 350,000. And God says, it's too big. So tell all of them who are scared and afraid to go home. And in that moment, 22,000 go home. He's got 10,000 left, and God says, you still have too many. And 9,700 go through another test and go home. And then in Judges 7 and 7, it says, By these that remain shall I deliver the Midianites into your hand. What was God doing? Why did he keep reducing him? Because he's not just the God of what you have and what you've lost. He's the God of what you have left. And by those that remain will I deliver the Midianites into your hand. Don't worry about what you've lost. 
I'm going to use what you've got left is what God is saying. Samson lost his anointing. He lost his reputation. He lost his influence. He lost his position. He lost his power. He lost everything. He lost his hair. He lost it all. He lost his freedom. He lost his vision. But God said, the miracle is not in what you've lost. The miracle is in what you've got left. And the Bible said his hair began to grow back. You know where God begins the miracle? Up here. Restoration begins up here. Restoration begins in your head when you fill it with the promises and say, God, you're still God of what I've got left and I refuse to crawl in a hole and die. I believe that you will bring your goodness in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for promises like this. He's Lord over what you've got left. In Exodus chapter 9, God told Moses to take handfuls of ashes and throw them Godward. Ashes are what you have left when you've been through the fire. Ashes are what you have left when you've been through the trial and all of it has been burned up and this is all you've got left. And God said, give me what you've got left. Throw it Godward. And when he took the handfuls of ashes and threw them up, the Bible said God turned it. And when the ashes came down, two hands full of ashes covered all of Egypt and afflicted the Egyptian army with bowls all over their body. God said, I'll use what you've got left and the ashes of the fiery trial you've been through. If you'll throw it back up Godward in praise, I'll rain it back down and I'll afflict your enemy with the ashes of what you've been through. Get a handful of ashes. And every time you come to God's house or even in your own house, Throw those ashes Godward and say, I still trust you. And not even heaven can shake my confidence in heaven. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Nothing's going to shake me off of you. I'll never let you go. He'll be God of what you've got left. Wonder how many near misses people have had people retreat and give up too early when they ought to hold on with what they've got left. I hadn't got a whole lot left, but what I've got left, that's what the miracle's in. I want you to understand that's what happened to David when he lost his family at Ziglag, lost his house, was burned down. He had nothing left. And the Bible said he prayed and said, God, do I go after the enemy? And God said, go. And he doesn't even know where to go. He just starts out because he doesn't know where they are. And the Bible said that he came upon a man. And listen to this scripture. The scripture said, he said, I am an Egyptian and I was the servant of an Amalekite who just raided the city of Ziglag and I fell sick, listen to these words, and my master left me. I'm what's left. I'm all you've got. You've lost your family. You've lost your house. You've lost your power. You've lost your resources. And all that you've got left is me. Be careful what you leave behind because David looks at him and says, so you know where the enemy's camp is? He said, I sure do. And I would love to lead you to it because they left me when I was sick. <laughs> and he went and found the enemy's camp and attacked them and wiped them out. But the miracle happened through what he had left. It was the, it was the, it was the Egyptian that was left behind that caused the miracle of restoration in David's family and everything that they took from him, he got it back. And the Bible said spoils beside, but it happened off of what was left behind from that attack. And I'm saying to you, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God always has one more hedge that he puts up and he leaves you something left behind. The woman with the issue of blood spent all. She lost all. 
her family, her health, her happiness, her, her money. She lost it all, but she took what she had left and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. The widow woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, the prophet said, what do you have left in your house? The creditors have come. My sons are being taken into slavery. I don't have anything except a pot of oil. If all you want to do is talk about what you've lost, the prophetic gift will not work. But if you will take what you've got left, and get it under the prophetic gift of the prophet Elisha, then what, what you have left is enough to produce all that you need for your future. Have you got anything left? Whatever you have left is enough. Have you got anything left? That's what God wants you to give him this morning. Give me what you've got left. I've been through a divorce or I've been through an addiction or I've been through a trial. I've been through grief. I've been through losing a husband, a wife, a child. What have you got left? God is saying to you, I am God of what's left. I made mistakes in my life and I wish I would have made wiser choices and I just messed up so bad and I can't get over my past. What have you got left? In Ezekiel 37, the prophet was asked by God as he stood in the valley of dry bones where the bones were very dry and very dead. Can these bones live? And the Bible said he had a very honest answer. Lord, you know. In other words, he was saying, I don't even have faith. I don't even have passion. I don't really even believe. But Lord, you know, I don't even know if there's any hope for this. I don't even know if this dream, this marriage, this family can ever live and be right again. Lord, you know. I mean, that's getting down to, uh, he, he doesn't have faith for his miracle. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have any passion about standing in the valley of dry bones. But God said, then prophesy to them and say, live. Listen to what he does. <laughs> so he says, well, I don't have any faith. and I don't have any passion. I doubt if anything's going to happen. And Lord, you know, I sure don't know. I, he, he didn't say, yes, I know God's going to do it. He said, I, I, I don't know. This is bad. So what's he got left? God said, use what you've got left. I don't have nothing left. I don't have any passion. I don't have any faith. I don't have nothing. Yes, you do. Just obey. So listen to what he said. So I prophesied as I was commanded. If you will speak the word of God to your situation anyway, even if you don't have faith yet, even if you don't feel real passionate about it yet, sometimes all you have left is obedience. I'm not feeling this. I don't have any chill bumps. I'm not seeing angels. Nobody's giving me a word. All I'm doing is what God told me to do. That's all I've got left. And the Bible said when he prophesied, there it is, as I was commanded. The bones came together. The army stood up. Life filled those dead bones and the vision came to pass. Today I've dropped by with a simple little message. God told me to tell you that he's not just the God of what you have and he's not just the God of what you've lost. And quit giving the devil glory for everything you've lost. But he's God of what you've got left. And if he took it, it's his vote in your life that you don't need it or them to fulfill his purpose in your future. And now I tell you this word and I want you to receive it with joy. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. Though the beginning was small, your latter end will greatly increase. 
Give me another translation. That's the HCSB. I don't even know what that is. Even your beginnings were modest, but your final days will be full of prosperity. Give me one more. I told them to get every translation they can. Though your beginning was insignificant, yet your end will increase because he's God of what's left. Give me one more. Your begin I like this one. Your beginnings will seem humble because so prosperous will your future be. Can anybody feel that go off in your spirit? If you do, that's what you have left. Stand up on your feet. Anybody believe that stuff? Who am I preaching to this morning? Who believes today that he's God of what's left? You keep talking about what you've lost, but God keeps seeing what you've got left. And he says, my plans for you is your, your ladder will be greater than your former. Just bow your head one moment and lift your hands high and open your mouth and just take about 15 seconds and get a praise in your spirit, in your mouth, in your throat, in your voice and begin to praise God. I know some of you may be from a different kind of church, whatever. That's what we do around here. You're on our turf. So right now, open your mouth and praise God that he's speaking to you this morning about the miracle of what's left. You don't know what that little child is going to do in your... You don't know what that little business that you've got left is going to do. You don't know that dream, that faith, that praise that refuses to die. It's stubborn and will not give up. That vision, it's in what you've got left. He's God of it. Trust Him. Believe Him. Refuse to allow depression and worry and frustration to overcome you. Instead, just begin to fill that valley in your life with praise and thanksgiving and joy unto God and say, God, I praise you today that you're God because the stump is still there. Now come a time. There came a time, that was the prophecy, and I didn't have time to read it all, but the prophecy to Nebuchadnezzar is there will come a day when I'll untie your stump. And that which you thought was gone forever is coming back to life again. They took Jesus and they hung him on a tree and they cut him down. But that stump came to life again on the third day when he walked out and said, I am Lord, I am Alpha, I am Omega, I am King, I am Savior, I am Deliverer. And he's God over what's left in your life, just like he was in Jesus. All Jesus had was a dead body in a tomb. But he's God over what's left after the attack. Bow your heads all over this room. I was amazed this morning at how many people raised their hand for salvation in the first service. And I sense that there are people in this room today, backsliders, and people who are searching and people who've been through the fire and all you've some of you've been through addiction some of you've been through painful episodes and experiences in your life and God sent you today to hear this simple message that he's the Lord of what's left give it to him give it to him today don't waste another day give it to him today Give him what's left of that home. Give him what's left of that marriage. Give him what's left of that dream. Give him what's left of that body that's been racked with addiction. Give him what's left. The miracle is in what's left. Pastor, pray for me. 
I know I'm not right with God and today I want Jesus to take what's left and fill me with his, with his forgiveness and cleansing and Holy Spirit power. Pray for me. If that's you and you want this prayer over your life, raise your hand high. Say, I want to surrender to him. Lift it high. There, 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 there. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else? Raise it high and unashamed. All the way on the back row. Raise it high and unashamed. Every one of you that have your hand raised, you got to trust me on this. But get out of your seat, walk down the aisle, and stand right down here in front. I'm going to pray a prayer, and we're going to give God what's left. He's going to bless what's left. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here they come, here they come. Everybody, thank God for this. Thank God for this. Thank God for this. Thank God for this. Come on, stand right down here. Come on, that's it. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Keep clapping. Clap like you believe God can, God can transform a heart. I read, I read yesterday, I read yesterday, while they're still coming, just come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. Isn't this great? Come on, just keep coming, just keep coming, just keep coming. Somebody else needs to get out of that seat. But I read yesterday, that it's approximately 18 inches from your head to your heart. But that's the difference between just hearing something and having transformation. 18 inches from your head to your heart. You've heard something with your head, but when you respond, this is the most important part of the service, not the preaching, not the singing, your response. None of it means anything if you don't respond right. Somebody else needs to slip out of that seat. Maybe someone with a marriage and grab that hand of that loved one and say, come on, we're gonna fight for what's left. Anybody else? Come on, I'll wait on you. I just sense this is a miracle day for people's families and lives. Let's pray this prayer. You know why you came? You know you. You wouldn't walk down in front of all these people. That was the Holy Spirit. That was the presence of God. That was the voice of God speaking to you, saying, I'm Lord of what's left in your life. I'm not through blessing you. Your latter end will be greater than your former. So let's pray this prayer. Let's pray it and mean it from the bottom of our heart today. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood you shed. You are Lord over all. Over what I've got. You're Lord over what I've lost. And you're Lord over what I've got left. And today I give you my life completely. I surrender to you. Take me. Restore me. Release the stump. Let my life blossom and bloom again. Forgive me. Transform me. Move from my head to my heart. Be Lord of my life and my future. I receive today a miracle from what's left. I'm standing in the altar with what's left and I believe what you have promised you have done. I'm forgiven. I'm saved. I'm cleansed. I'm a new creation. It's in my heart. You live in my heart from this day forward in Jesus' name. And all the church said amen. I want us to do one thing in closing. Did you get something out of this today? I hope you did. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together, everybody. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you Wednesday night.